I put a sub printer on my VTuber model. And before you say something, no, it's not a green screen. It's not a real time track mat. This is actually built into my model. And no, my model is not 3D, it's 2D. So let me explain where the idea came from, how I set it up in Live 2D, and how the hell it actually works. Uh, Twitch TV, a magical place with tons of issues that we will not be talking about today. It paved a path for live streaming and introduced subscriptions, which were a kind gesture to support your favorite streamers monetarily. And as a way to show thanks, people would read your message or write your name down somewhere, usually somewhere totally appropriate, and there was never a problem with writing names in weird places or anything, but people started to get really creative with how interactive their streams are. And I mean really creative. One of my favorite interactive stream ideas of all time was when Wayne Radio TV introduced his fax machine and let his chat send any images in to be printed out. I cannot stress how fucking funny, innovative, and amazingly interactive this idea is, and it permanently left an imprint on me as to what's possible with streaming. Nutty also has a subscription printer, and it's been an integral part of his streams for years now, and he got that idea from someone else. So the idea of having your interaction with a streamer being a real physical object present with the streamer has been around for a while, and I can definitely do that, but I've got one problem. I'm not a person. Well, you know, I am a person, but I don't stream my real physical body. And that means I can't have any real physical interaction with my chat. I'm limited to my 2D body. Now, don't get me wrong. VTubers have all sorts of toggles that you can press to react to chat messages, and you can even set them up to be redeemable via chat so that people can see the results of a button that they press on your model. But that's not anything new or particularly special since it's pretty much a standard for VTubers at this point. Now, we also have a ton of new apps for things like text-to-speech pets and being able to throw objects, but again, these are also pretty standard at this point. So when I was working on my V4 model, I was trying to figure out a way that I would go about making my model to be automated and more interactive and definitely less me having to press buttons because I forget to press my buttons. Now I talk about how I ended up planning my model design in my debut video. I'll link that somewhere in the description, but ultimately part of the design choice was to specifically have Bugbot, which is the name of this little guy here if you haven't met him yet, be my mule for all of my stream tasks. I say as he King does a screensaver. Okay, buddy. Perfect timing. Thank you for that. My plan was for him to do random tasks like show when raids come through, when I get subs, bits, etc. However, since he's inspired by retro and cassette futurism, I was thinking about old computers and old printers. And it got me thinking, what if I just, what if I just make Bugbot into a printer? And then it hit me. How the f am I gonna do that? So let's start by talking about how exactly I did do that, and let's begin with the rigging. And then we can talk about, you know, yeah, all that other f***ing stuff. The rigging can be boiled down into four very annoying components. Bugbot, the receipt itself, the animation, and the image texture. First of all, I'm 2D, which means that Bugbot is actually a glue amalgam. He is literally just a metric f ton of glue. Not canonically, though. I mean, canonically, he's a bunch of meat and bones, but we're not talking about that, are we? Making something 2D look 3D and work in a 2D space is extremely unforgiving, but I did a test run and some practice objects to get myself used to gluing uh, live 3D objects as you would call them, and with those new gluing skills I ended up getting Bugbot prepped. The receipt itself is an absolute nightmare because it has physics, it has to follow the movement of Bugbot and myself, but then it has to switch to track with my hand after the animation's done, and if I were to do this again, I would simply make two receipts, an opacity fade them in the animation, but I think I was just high on like keyform fumes or something and I made it all into one object? There's something gravely wrong with me. The receipt looks great at every angle though, thanks to some tedious masking. The values for the numbers here are simply rigged on an opacity slider, so nothing too complicated, just a lot of frames. Next up is the animation. Thankfully, as I mentioned before, there's something gravely wrong with me, so I already had made hand tracking rigged on this model. Yeah. And that means that I can use the rigged hand and hand angles to grab the receipt, which was very convenient and saved a lot of time and extra asset drawing. This is what the animation looks like, except I can't actually show you, because I don't think you can preview physics parameters in the Live 2D animator window. If you know how to do that, please tell me. Anyhow, here's the animation in action in Live 2D. The last thing that I had to do was make sure I could swap out the texture. Live 2D, like with 3D, uses texture atlases, although in 2D, they don't have to wrap around the stuff, 
so there's no weird like psychedelic warping between objects. It's just void space. But if I had to update only a part of it, I'm assuming I would have to know the coordinates of the pixels to be able to overwrite them. I probably could have figured out how to do this since I did work with Fitz files in college, but this was a long time ago and uh, I can just put the image on its own texture atlas anyway, so there's no need for anything that complicated. Even with the model prepped and ready to go, the hell does not end there because we have to start phase two, which is where we actually export the model and get it into VTube Studio. The VTube Studio end of things is pretty straightforward. I just have to swap out the image, right? Easy. But the textures are only loaded in when the model is first opened. So if I want to update the image in real time, I have to run a texture reload hotkey or reload the model in completely. Those are easy to do, but there's a major moment of lag when reloading. I decided to cover that loading moment with some cool effects via Finite Singularity's Retro Effects plugin. Nice! Now for the actual swapping of the texture and triggering the reload and number input. For this, I use my trusty friend, StreamerBot. StreamerBot is a stream controller that is very versatile and has tons of integrations for VTubers. It also has this special thing called execute C sharp code, where you can write custom C sharp and have a bunch of stuff happen in a very controlled environment. Now I'm no coding expert, but I do know some Python and some Fortran, which translated well to C sharp. In fact, C sharp is very readable. And if you're watching this in cowering in a corner at the thought of coding, it's not bad. C Sharp is very learnable. The code that I wrote basically grabs the target user's profile picture URL, resizes that image to the texture atlas size, replaces the texture atlas image in the texture folder, reloads the model while covering up the lag with an OBS filter, turns on the appropriate toggles for the number of months subscribed, and then runs the animation while playing a sound. So here is the end result of all of that work. I'm so proud of this because it started as an extremely ambitious idea, something I assumed I would not be able to actually achieve, but I really pushed myself and somehow got it working, and it led to even more insanity and limit testing, which produced stuff like me running Doom on Bugbot and having him be an interactive slot machine as well. So let me know what you think I should limit test next, and I will see you on the next one. Bye!